Hey guys, how's it going? It's Adam Mazins here. Today we're going to be reacting to some scary stories animated by my favorite llama art. Don't forget to subscribe to him. Let's do this, guys. Alright guys, this first one's called School Lockdown. It was a typical boring day in calculus, only it was Friday, 7th period, meaning the week was almost over and spring break would finally be upon us. So everybody was getting antsy in their seats, I could tell. We didn't have a test that day like a lot of my friends did with their other teachers, so our teacher in the middle of class just decided to start playing games with us on Sporkle.com. He was a very laid-back teacher that like that. Before. As we were doing some brand logo quiz on Sporkle, I remember the exact moment it happened. Right after my friend answered a question, I remember the exact answer too, Adidas. The dean's voice came through the loudspeaker. He sounded panicked and frantic as he told all the teachers this was not a drill and to go into lockdown. I actually got the chills and I got goosebumps on my arms as our too. usually laid back teacher too seemed panicked as he ran to turn off the lights and ushered us to the back corner of the room. We all sat in silence for about two minutes, and then the usual buzzing that came from a panel in the back of the room ceased, indicating that the school must have cut all the power. We all looked at each other, realizing this must be serious. Yeah. A few more minutes of waiting later, we heard a man screaming at the top of his lungs coming down the hallway. Two girls in the class oh, actually started no. crying, which made all of us even more scared. I wouldn't do it. As the screaming got closer to the classroom, the lunatic sounding man started banging on the lockers Dang, while screaming, like, I'll kill all of you. Up in the lockers too. It was at that moment that I started to fear for my life. My teacher I shushed us as we all looked at each other to see our peers' reactions. The banging then moved from the lockers to our classroom door. And that's when one of the crying girls screamed it no. It would be that classroom too. The banging on the door only grew worse as the man started screaming, open up. In all honesty, Two of I'd the girls in the class were crying. crying out loud now. It felt like an eternity that that man was pounding at the door. But eventually, he finally continued down the hallway, screaming like a mentally insane person until we could not hear him anymore. I'd say 10 minutes later, though it felt like half an hour given the situation, the dean came back on the loudspeaker explaining the situation, which was surprising for him to do. Why would he do he explained that some apparently mentally building, unstable though. person entered the building and assaulted the woman sitting at the front desk, causing her to flee the building screaming, and staff wasn't sure if the man was armed or not. Now this was well, before the school the had cameras or police, could afford honestly. proper security, so the school was wide open to something like this happening. The staff had done a sweep of all the hallways and classrooms and couldn't find him, so the dean instructed the, the teachers to resume teaching but to keep all the doors locked and to not let any students leave for any reasons. The most disturbing part, however, is that one of the janitors working the night shift found the man sleeping in one of the storage closets near the back end of See, the school, that's what you get for not and according police, to rumors though. that were spread by my peers, sticking out of his pocket was a 44 Magnum. The janitor must have done something stupid to wake him up, for example, leaving the closet door open, because by the time a police officer could arrive on the scene, the man was gone. Oh, now they, now they call the My police. entire class, as far as I know, to this day, has no idea if this man was ever found, but I like to think that right now, he's being given the proper help that he needs. I would hope so. Alright, this next one's a camping story. I was on summer break, and went camping with my friend and his parents. We went to the lake during the day, and did the s'mores thing at night. His parents shared a tent while my friend and I had our own. I can't remember where the campsite was, and I'm not really in contact with my friend anymore. I kinda but wanna go camping this later, summer. I'm assuming it wasn't the safest place to camp. Here's why. I woke up sometime in the early morning, like 3 or 4 a.m., and immediately saw a man's face looking in the tent at us. Oh, he had unzipped no. the door, just enough to stick his head inside. He looked uh, absolutely insane. Look at that insane. Uh. He had big eyes and wild hair. I was so stiff from fear, I literally couldn't do anything. The man kept moving his head from left to right. 
very, oh. very slowly. Game chills, guys. As if it was I don't uncontrollable. Like that face. I guess my friend could hear me breathing loudly or something because he woke up too. He had oh. the same reaction as me and just laid there in terror. Why aren't looking you calling at this for the parents? Man. I'm not certain how long he was sitting there looking at us, but it felt like hours, shaking his head back and forth. At some point, we heard a noise close by, and so did the man. He disappeared quick, and a couple minutes later we got out of our tent and woke up his parents. The guy was long gone. I'm still afraid of camping to this day. Yeah, I would be too. Maybe I shouldn't go camping this summer, guys. Is creepy mysteries unexplained stories Ooh, I love that sound effect there was once an isolated island off the coast of Scotland where three lighthouse keepers lived and were responsible for keeping the building intact one day when their monthly supply ship dropped in the island was silent no response from the lighthouse keepers Ooh. Eventually, the captain and some crew members went to investigate and found a disturbing empty lighthouse. I think they made a movie about this. Two of the three waterproof think, uh, coats were Gerald missing Butler from their hangers, and the kitchen was left in a state as if people had left in a hurry. The lighthouse log only added more mystery to the situation. The log described how one of the keepers wouldn't talk, and the other continuously cried for hours. All this pain and fear seemed to be coming from what was referred to I'd as a powerful storm hours, looming honestly. in the distance. No However, anxiety. this begs the question, why were they so scared of a simple storm? They should have been safe yeah, in the brand new lighthouse, right? The log goes on to talk about how they all sat close together and prayed for the storm to be over. The mm -hmm, final log states, the storm has passed, the skies are calm, and God is over all. Their bodies were never found, and the cause of their death is still a mystery to this day. Whoa. The most accepted theory is that they somehow got swept out to sea during the storm, never to be seen yeah. again. But one final detail remains, one that scared the captain and his crew to the bone. The powerful storm described in the log didn't exist. There were no what? storms reported in the area. In fact, the skies were calm all day. That's crazy, dude. All right, guys, this last one is my personal favorite. Eligibly true thunderstorm scary stories animated. I'm going to need my chocolate for this. In the year 2009, I was spending a weekend with my uncle on his ranch when my parents were renovating the new house we had just bought. It was my second night there, a Saturday, and it happened to be during one of the biggest thunderstorms of the year. I'd say there were at least three crashes of thunder and lightning per minute. And we were in the heart oh, of the I storm be because the thunder would crash not even a second after the lightning would. I always enjoyed listening to storms while laying in bed. So I stayed up a little later watching TV, just enjoying the ambiance. After the movie I was watching finally ended, I turned off the TV and tried to fall asleep. As I heard the lightning Ooh. strike from outside, I could have sworn I heard some kind of metallic thud coming from outside at the same time. I yeah. didn't pay it too much mind. 20 seconds later, I could have sworn I heard it again. A very distinct metallic thud coming from outside to match the timing of the lightning. I really don't mean to make this sound like a cliche horror story. But my uncle really is a kind of creepy guy, and I was never close with him, even remotely. So for that reason, I didn't feel right going to wake him up. I just tried to forget about it. Oh. Now I was getting concerned. What the hell could that be? Yeah, what is it? After the third time, I finally got out of bed and walked over to the window of the guest bedroom. The water pouring down on the window made it extra hard to see what was out there in the dark fields. A flash of lightning momentarily lit up the property, but I couldn't see anything. However, once again, the sound of a metal hit accompanied it. The sound was so close now, it sounded like it was coming from the left of the window at a blind spot. I was going to do something I knew my uncle wouldn't be happy about. 
It would be a bit messy, yeah. but I was going to open the window and peer outside to see if I could see Called what it. the sound was. I unhooked the window lock and slid it up, and immediately the wind of the storm blew drops of rain into the room and onto me. I stuck my head out the window and looked to the left, and at that very moment, lightning lit up the property once again, and I could see a person dressed in all black crouched down by the outside basement door with his hand raised in the air. And before the sky went dark, I caught the briefest glimpse of what the sound was coming from. The person was bashing at the basement door lock. I pulled my head in and quietly shut the window, making sure to lock it. I was in a panic. I feared he might have seen or heard me. I ran back to bed and pretended to be asleep, facing away from the window. Why would you do that? Lightning crashed once again, but this time there was no metallic thud. My heart must okay. have dropped as I realized this. Don't go back to bed if someone's breaking in your house. I just stayed okay, put in bed that. for the longest time, hoping whoever was out there would go away. After maybe three more lightning crashes without any thuds accompanying them, I thought it would be safe to go tell my uncle. I turned to face the window and screamed. There was a figure, clear as day, standing at the oh. window, looking in at me. Uh -uh. I screamed as loud as I could I, and ran no, straight to my uncle's room. He went outside with his hunting rifle, with nothing on but his pajamas, not even socks. He ran that's, around the entire property yelling like right a madman, but didn't find anyone. The next morning, we were able to better see the marks on the basement door lock. It was almost bashed open. Maybe three Literally, or four more good hits would have done it, according to, to my uncle. When he, he was, was proud of me in, for why picking would you up do on that? it. Luckily, I was out of there that same day. My uncle hasn't told us of any incidents since, so I think he's been okay. Not that we talk to him much at all. I'm grateful I stayed up a little later that night watching that movie, because I may have just stopped a robbery, or possibly Honestly, much worse. I stay up that late every night, so... I'd be safe. <laughs> well, anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked everything. If you liked what you see, like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to hit that bell notification to let you know that I have more videos. Stay safe out there, guys, and stay at Amazings.